and recording. I think so. Let me make sure. And now we're recording. Episode. It's windy. Windy, windy. Episode 330. Still fucking with this microphone. Oh, man, I had Hot Pockets, and I definitely just tasted that. This is one of the things I got. I thought it was a lot smaller. It's uh, it's this, like, dome that's supposed to prevent outside noise. The problem is, is it's ginormous, and you can't see my funny face if I try to use it. But um, maybe I'll just put it back here. Maybe it still has some absorptive qualities or some shit who knows i don't think it's in the on screen now i don't think so can't hurt though right can't hurt to get a little absorption maybe who knows let me uh fuck this is a real strong start to the podcast um yeah we'll just put it over here for now Real strong start to the podcast. Um, So yesterday I went into the Power Elite and the infrastructure of it, like Raven Rock and everything. And um, I talked about the book War State by Michael Swanson. And I thought uh, there was like the cultural or not cultural, maybe political and or uh, bureaucratic equivalent of uh, the relocation arc. Um. I did email that author. He did get back to me. He's going to come on the show. So that's going to be dope. Um, what was I going to go on? But like every solo rant, just going to riff and it may have a subject. It may not. Yeah, I've been thinking about like time a lot lately. Time is very odd. I vividly remember at the end of fifth grade. So like may 2002 i remember sitting bull cut and braces i remember sitting at um sitting at the the dinner table we have this big ass wooden table it's dope it's at our lake house now i remember sitting there and i remember thinking i am here right now so i was i was not quite 12 and like, I would really grasp that I was here right now. So I think it blew my mind that fifth grade went by so fast. Um, you know, all the, those fucking, those, uh, those comments on, you know, how you can go to any video on any, any, you can go to any song on YouTube, any song. It does not matter when. And there will always be the same generic comments. Back when music was good. The good old days. Life was so easy when this song came out. Back when artists had talent. Now we just have. It doesn't matter. I was born in the wrong generation. That's one that will really want to make you blow your fucking brains out. I was born in the wrong generation. No, you weren't. You weren't. You were not. Back when music was good. Uh, and then, of course, there's the generic, who's here in month, year. But you can go back to any song. And I am guilty of this, too. I vividly remember making a a Facebook status my freshman year of college at Valdosta State University. I was taking a whopping 11 credit hours of just bullshit courses Well. Well, after having been initiated into a frat with a with a pool, my, my life couldn't have been easier. And I remember the workload from these college courses. It was like my first brush with pre med with biology. I remember, I remember uh, thinking how difficult it was, and I remember making a Facebook status. High school was so easy, and just how retarded that was. But if you go back, you can look at any comment on any music video, and it's always. But the the ones that really get me, I don't know why I find these to make them so fun. I mean, kind of if you see like a, you know, like a Beatles song, and it's like, 
I'm 78 now. I remember going on a date listening to that song, like Beautiful Days. I guess, I don't know, there's something about, I can, sure, you're gonna, you know, there are beautiful days. And I get nostalgia. I mean, I lost a sibling to suicide. You know, I look back at old things and, you know, I laugh and I smile and I'm like, the good old days, sure. But it's also all horseshit. And maybe that's what it takes is that maybe there's a certain threshold because apparently I'm the arbiter of what is a good old day and what is not. I am the king. But um, yeah, whatever. Fuck you. I'm the emperor now. If it's back before a certain date, you're allowed to uh, bathe in your, uh, your, your golden memory of it, your rose tinted glasses. So like that line from Watchmen, the graphic novel. Um Every day that was every day, the present gets darker and darker and the past just gets brighter and brighter. It's, it, it means some cheesy line, but it's great. It's, uh, it's the woman that, uh, um, the comedian raped, um, the one that Eddie raped and she has like an abusive, you know, she remembers him fondly despite the fact that she was assaulted. Um, but yeah, if you go back and so, but the point is, is my favorite ones are, is you know even now you know i might hear a song from like 2010 um uh, silver city by ghostland observatory like that one brings me back to like summer 2010 sure simpler times but the best are when you see something that's like i remember listening to this back in fifth grade now i'm in seventh grade oh how the time flies <laughs> Or it's like, I saw a video yesterday. I swear to God, I saw a video yesterday. And it was like, I remember watching this when I was six. Like, now I'm nine. Like, I wish life was that easy again. <laughs> but I mean, fuck, here I am right now looking finally at 2010. I'm sure in 10 years, I'll be like, you dipshit. You don't know how easy you have it now. Which got me thinking. I wrote this down the other day. I used to do it a lot. Because I remember listening to Duncan Trussell once. Um it was probably fall 2012. And I remember listening to him on Rogan. I remember him saying that you should write down any interesting thought you have every day. Just make a note on your phone, put it on a notepad, whatever. And he said that it's a lot like fishing. Like you're not always going to catch something, but if you don't have a net out there, you're never going to catch anything. And he said to put out a net. And sometimes that sometimes the fish you catch aren't that good. It's and quoting him is you know, sometimes your note of the day is Mountain Dew Code Red is good. And that's fine. But you got to start doing it. You got to start kind of feeling out, you know. Got to kind of start feeling feeling out and kind of grabbing things. Um, and that's got me thinking about time more and more. I'll, I'll go back to the fifth grade thing later. It's not really relevant. It all kind of is. Back to the fifth grade thing. But I remember sitting there really grasping that right now is right now. So let's let's do it right now. Let's do what I did in fifth grade right now. It is now. I can hear my mom's wind chimes outside. You know, I'm looking around. It's 3.35 p.m. Thursday, January 28th, 2021. We are right here. We are right here. Right now. I have my hand up right now are we all here is everybody paying attention we're here right now we're looking at my hand and it's raised take it in there it is okay got it everybody looking at it it's here it's here right now now that moment is gone now we are looking back at it what just happened it's not here anymore right now we are discussing it. It's gone. And that may sound simple, but that I remember that threw me for such a loop. Because now, seemingly, no time has passed. I mean, sure, we have that sensation of a little bit of time having passed. But now we're here. And I remember in fifth grade, I started to get into to basketball. There's a purpose to this. I started to get into basketball. And all my friends have been playing for years, and I wanted to get better quickly. And I realized that if I just, thinking of that moment, 
the time is going to pass. So why not start practicing dribbling now or practicing layups or, you know, the proper shooting technique or whatever now? Why not practice it now? And it will be right now and it will feel forever this afternoon shooting hoops in the driveway in Georgia. It's hot as fuck and I suck. But why don't you just do that right now? And then before you know it, it's dark out. You're going inside for dinner. Okay. But now that day is behind you. Now you have that thing to show for it. And I realized that a year is going to go by really quickly. So why not have something to show for it? And I did. And I remember a year later, I you know was one of the better players, not the best by any means, but much to the point where like people were not like friends were actually like vocal. We're all retarded thirteen year olds, but even these even us underdeveloped retards were able to point out like, man, Tommy got really good in a year. Going into eighth grade, I remember thinking the same thing, and getting into weightlifting. My dad had a Bowflex, which I'm actually looking at right now. It's kind of a weird full circle. I remember thinking, what if I just did like 10 minutes a day? What if I just did like 10 minutes a day? It doesn't matter what I'm doing, just start. The time will pass. And at this point, it was, I was going into, I think, seventh grade. So now, like two, now, like another year and a half, two years had passed, and the basketball thing was already, it's behind me now. And now I was better at basketball. Okay. So I started with that. Blink my eyes. Now I'm a sophomore in high school, and I was probably about as bulky as I am now then. I got really big towards like senior year, and then it's been tapering off ever since through nobody's fault but my own. I remember, I vividly remember the summer or the summer after freshman year of high school. I vividly remember sitting in my aunt's basement and thinking about how I wanted to save money. By now, I already had a little bit of muscle mass. I was like 15. Stopped playing basketball. wasn't interested in it anymore. anymore. But I was like, okay, like I know how this stuff kind of works. The time is going to pass. And I remember I got a job at my buddy Joe, who's been on here. Joe Udell's been on here. He came on here with uh, Dale and uh, Ted Eye one time. I love Joe. Shout out Joe. Um, Joe is a recent convert to the church of Tim Dillon. But um, I remember I got a job at Joe's dad's place. He had this warehouse in uh, Atlanta. They built door frames, which is just, uh, I wish I could transfer my memories to the computer screen because that was just in itself was like a, was better than any TV series you could watch. It was just the most ridiculous. I loved it. Shout out, James. But, uh, yeah, shout out, James. Shout out, Carl. 27 Meth Bags, Carl. Shout out, Miguel. Kind of. Shout out, Al. Lester. But Alex, Joe, Pat, my brother, he worked there. The video game guy, Rosa, but I remember starting working there and we'd spend some, but I remember I saved like most of it. And I did that for two straight summers and I got like $2,000. I took that and I remember I was too young to do it. So I had my parents open an E-Trade account for me because I wasn't 18. Took my 2000, put it in there, put it in Apple and I put some in Microsoft. Even early on, I had that good old that good old Rothschild mentality. I was like, fund both sides and I will reap the rewards, you know? Like that Rothschild's meme, like, hi, I'm so and so Rothschild. You've never you don't you've never heard just those shitty boomer memes that somehow become fact in the public consciousness. I'm 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 sure one of you listening to this has seen what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm so and so Rothschild. I'm worth five hundred trillion dollars. You've never heard of me. I've funded both sides of every war since Napoleon. Yeah, I get it. But I remember I invested in Apple. And again, it was like the time is going to pass. And I checked it every day. I checked it every day. And eventually I just learned to stop checking it. And over the years, it turned into like 16K. And I cashed out and had to pay for shit. That's another story for another time. Um, but there's a point of all of these. I'm not just sucking my own dick. I can't. 
tried. The point is, is that there's these long-term goals that always seem impossible, but then I, I managed to, to get them done. And the reason why I'm going into such depth explaining it is because I'm trying to do the opposite of say, like, look what I've done so much as I'm trying to convey that I'm as retarded and lazy as anybody. I've just kind of found this like hack to do it. And I hate that life hack. There are no hacks. There are no fucking hacks. There, there is no hack. It's just shut up. The NSA hacks. Nobody else does. Fuck off. But getting into and again, so, but these, but you can now start to see where these have spanned different fields now. Basketball, weightlifting. Okay, maybe. Okay. Oh, those are both you know physical things. Okay, but what about saving and investing now? That's a little. That's not the same. Getting into college, my first day of my sophomore year, getting too high in the frat house and realizing I want to be a doctor, just studying every day. The time passes, next thing you know, I'm getting in, right? That's what he said. But it's these long-term things that I've managed to do because even though you're right here right now, and the present moment seems to drag on at a glacial space pace. At the same time, it's, it's over before you know it. And that time has elapsed. So have something to show for it. Now, after I lost my sibling, John, to suicide on April 15th, 2014, that combined with I just decided I didn't want to go to med school and was just realizing that I kind of spent four years studying but didn't enjoy life. It was this perfect storm of just, I had a midlife existential crisis at 23. A couple years, but what I can really, what I would really say illuminates this couple years aside from weight gain, drug abuse, and generally being a piece of shit was instant gratification which you can draw all these parallels between, you know, I you know felt like death was on my doorstep at all times. I felt like I had to get it all now because I didn't get it while the getting was good. Whatever, you know, fucking we're all carrying our own cross. But in my mind, the one way I really like to illuminate that time was there were no long-term goals. It was choose a goal now attack it ferociously, burn yourself out, barely get enough sleep. You know, it was like sprinting the first quarter mile of a marathon kind of thing. Set that as your standard. And then the moment you drop below it, fuck this, I've fucked up. There's no point in doing it anymore. And although a lot more things happened, moving home after becoming suicidal, getting sober, doing therapy, doing OCD therapy, um, just trying to start to better myself. I mean, just general things like brushing my teeth again, like putting clean clothes on, trying to watch my calories even remotely. Right now I'm sitting at 203. I'd like to be back down to 170, but I'm not where I was, 237. I, I began teaching myself graphic design. And that was the first thing. And I, and I started to do it in 2016 when I moved home because I didn't have anything else to do. All my friends and family girlfriend at the time, all 600 miles south of me. The point is, is I started doing graphic design. I didn't set out to do graphic design. I just started making memes on my phone, right? And that kind of cascaded to where my parents and all their love got me an iPad and they were like, see what you can do with that after like a year and a half. And I, I got much better, but it was all that was something that I couldn't help but look because I, I mean, I literally had there in my photo library, I could go back and look at early works and then look at works months later and see how, how much it improved. I mean, this is you know, one of my earlier designs on my sweatshirt right now, which will be available in the merch store versus like this one is like a year, this design's like a year, maybe 18 months older than that Bob Lazar one or that Pharaoh psychedelic one, which, which are much better. And so what I couldn't ignore was this 
slow increase in quality. And sometimes I try to turn it up. I'd be like, oh my God, this thing's working. I need to dial it up to 11. But then I'd stop and I'd be like, fuck that. I don't want to do it anymore. And then I'd keep designing for shits and giggles. And eventually this thing would just kind of roll on until I, I realized I was getting much, much better. And so with starting this podcast, I remember I began. So before we jump into that, let's look at kind of what I have noticed or what I had noticed at these long-term goals that I always managed to complete. And now, I mean, again, I was just sitting at that table at 12 years old before we even evaded Iraq. Now here I am, Joe Biden's president. It's January 28th, 2021. I'm 30 and a half years old. Like it's just, it, it's just, it, it just, it's, it happens so quick. High school, that one class in high school on that one random Wednesday drags on, and then you blink, and it's, it, it, it's just, it's already ten years ago. It's just, it's over ten years ago. I graduated twelve years ago from high school. It's, it's just gone. So. What I began noticing, and I don't think I quite noticed it with basketball, but I think I st first started to actually notice the pattern with weightlifting. So we did basketball, weightlifting, investing, pre-med, graphic design. Was that choose the smallest unit of work that you know you will do on your worst day. And that's it. It would be like if I said I wanted you to walk 365 miles in a year. You, and the first day you go walk a mile and you listen to a podcast, it's breezy. You know, it's, let's say you start in like July. It's, you know, let's say you start on like a July evening. It's 7 p.m. sunset. You no, know, the weather's just great. A little muggy, but a little great. You got some swamp ass, but hey, whatever. It comes with the territory. And you're walking, whew, it's just great. You come back in, have a slice of cold watermelon. You're like, bro, that was so easy. Why don't we just do like 10 a day and knock this bitch out in a month? There's a psychological thing that happens when you establish a norm, a baseline, a minimum, and then the day you fall below it. And I would be so bold as to say, I think this is applicable to most people obviously that no blanket statement like that can work for everybody but if you go a day without doing that norm it kind of feels like the whole thing's fucked why, why are we even fuck it why are we even doing to start over start over i don't want to you know and so although you probably could do i mean if you really want to 10 miles a day i mean you're definitely capable of it there will be a day, and everyone knows this that's ever started on a workout regimen, right? I'm going to fucking go in there. I'm myself more guilty than anybody. I'm going to fucking crush it every day. It feels great. You get that beginner's luck. You start making gains. And then that adrenaline wears off of the new endeavor that you're on. And you do a day where you don't want to do it. Or better yet, you wake up on a day when you're not feeling it. And you look at what you have to do that day and for every day that week you've been burning the wick at both ends you've been burning the midnight oil you've been doing a, a fast cardio mile you've been doing weights and swimming you've been burning yourself to the fucking base and you wake up that day and you go i'm not doing that fuck that and then you don't do it and then once you don't do one day, it's easier to not do the next day. And then if you do get back in there, if you manage to rally and you go back, get back in there, you may do a decent workout, but anything short than that two hour madman session you had been doing, you kind of feel a little defeated. Fuck, how come I'm not even doing that? Why wasn't I doing that? You know? And, uh, that, that sows the seeds of defeat. And then next thing you know, three months have gone by your jeans are much tighter and you're going fuck i gotta get back into the gym and then you rinse and repeat right and i did that for years i'm still doing that you know dropping from 237 to 
roughly 200. And how come I'm not back down at 170? It's because I'm relearning the process. So what you have to do is choose a minimum amount, a unit of work that you have to do every day and make that your baseline. And just do that. And that sounds simple, but I'm finding, I found that this is how it works. So let's go to exercising. I found in high school that, sure, you'd have great days where you're getting a good pump on, you're looking in the mirror, your biceps are jacked up, fuck yeah, I got this. But we're not planning for that day, all right? Because no one needs to plan for that day because that day is awesome, right? Yeah, you can be going on a week of like next to no sleep after finals week, but yeah, on that last Friday, it doesn't matter that you've slept a total of 10 hours in the previous seven days. The semester's over. It's summertime. Let's go get fucked up. Yeah, anybody can rally for that because that's fun. Anyone, anybody can rally for the carrot, right? You've got to implement the stick. And to do that, you have to set out these tiny units. So with exercising, I always I made myself, I made my workout. It, I, it had to be, the way I set it out is it took about 16 minutes. Next to no breaks, aside from catching my breath. Because I knew that on my worst day, coming home from high school, you get out at 3 p.m., you're home at 4.15, you've been sitting passenger seat in a car on a 45-minute ride on I-85, and it's hot out, and you're, it's, it's lulled you to sleep, and you wake up, and man, I kind of just, you want to just go sit on the couch, and you hear those bugs, that zzzz, it's just those, like, dog days of summer. You come home, and you're like, oh, I got fucking sleep. If at that moment you go, I got to go put on a sleeveless and basketball shorts and drive up to the gym and Jesus, I'm not, fuck that. I'm not doing that. But if you tell yourself 15 minutes or 16 minutes in, out, that's how much time passes when you're sitting on the toilet and realized you finished shit. You, you stopped pooping 16 minutes ago. And now you're just sitting there with a poopy butthole going, fuck, I got, I got shit to do. If you can make it into a negligible amount of time, then you'll do it every day. And at first, you're going to be going, I'm only doing 16 minutes a day. I'm fucking, I've been doing it for a week and I'm not seeing any gains. You cannot look at it like that. What you have to do is you have to get lost in the sands of time. You have to look at it like, Think of when you're on like a, a boat, you know, it's some summer at a lake with your family or whatever, F fucking your cousins or not, not fucking your cousins. I mean, you're fucking with your cousins. I'm from New Hampshire, not Alabama. Think of like being on a boat and, you know, you kind of, you're hang maybe hanging your feet off the back of the boat or whatever. It's a pontoon boat and you can just, you know, you put your finger in and it's, it's streaming water behind, right? Or think of, think of maybe, um, uh, one of those trucks that paints the lines on the road, right? It just puts the puts the thing down, pulls it back up, puts it down, pulls it back up. The act of driving is what causes the lines. But all this thing's doing is choo, 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 choo. it's just putting the the fucking paintbrush down. I really gotta pee. I'll be right back.
also grab some Tylenol off of my head. I get a, a little bit of a headache. I don't know why the fuck I just talked like that. Um, so the street painter thingy is. Think of, think of when you're little and you're playing with chalk or something and you're drawing something really long, right? And you got to do that weird, uncomfortable where you're kind of squatting out. You kind of, you kind of squat down on like two legs, kind of doing that weird little, and you're like dragging the piece of chalk and you, you know, it's squiggly and you can't get it straight for the life of you. And you're just and you're trying to it's this weird thing and it's you're getting your, your wrists getting sore or whatever versus like you're on like a big wheel or on like a just anything it's just maybe a skateboard you're sitting on it and you're just dragging the chalk and you go downhill and it's longer and straighter than anything you could have made but it was also easier. So despite being of greater size and quality, there's so many, that's what she says. But I'm trying to avoid those because I'm talking about being a kid on a skateboard. But despite being of greater quality and greater size, it took less effort. Why is that? It's about utilizing... And this is going to sound like some bullshit motivational speaker, but it's about, it's literally about utilizing the fourth dimension over the third. Think of, okay, another example. I remember when I, uh, after I graduated, I went back and took some more courses at UGA because I decided I wanted to go to pharmacy school. I lived with my buddy, Harry, and every day we'd walk back from campus so now I'm like, tw- um, no, not quite 24. No, no, I just turned 24. And we had this old house and uh, we had this big backyard and this like fire pit. And it's the fall. It was fall 2014. And every day we'd walk back on, it was um, well, anybody from the, um, anybody that went to UGA and you're like the vet building kind of by the intramural fields. Every time we'd walk back, We'd grab just a stick or something because it's fall. You got a bunch of broken dry wood around. We'd grab a stick or a log, nothing big, nothing crazy. We'd just drag it and we'd walk back enough that you had to put a little bit of effort in. You can grab a twig, but you also don't, don't break your back. It's the end of the day. You're tired. It's 4 PM. It's literally 4 PM, but you would just put, I mean, for instance, back when we did the hand thing, that was at 336, right? Now it's been 24 minutes passes. But it would be, you drag this, we just drag a piece of wood. Sometimes it would be both of us. Sometimes it'd just be him. Sometimes it'd just be me, you know? Again, nothing crazy. You got your backpack. It's the end of the day. You're tired. Because we decided, like, what if we just brought back one piece of wood for, like, this whole semester? And it's just kind of a stupid thing. Because we didn't want to go buy wood. We were cheap. But sure enough, we did it, and we made it simple enough that even on a, even on a tired monday and you've been drinking all weekend and you're fucking you're not that fuck i just had to get through courses today i just you know, uh, fuck i got a quiz i got a lab i got x y and z to do oh god i have to bring rent over fuck i'm all out of groceries i need to get groceries and you just got all this shit to do and all you want to do is go to bed you have to factor that day as your base and so do what you know you can do on that day just grab a stick two feet long, whatever, just grab it. You can grab a weird chunk of it and it's just drag it behind you and you're whatever. You look like a psycho, but that's, you got to factor that in. I mean, at the end of the year, we had this huge ass fucking, we had two people times. I mean, it was what, all of August, September, October, November, December, 150 days, 300 pieces. of. We had this giant fucking thing. We had bonfires all winter and into the spring. And I don't think we even finished it by the time we moved out. Like two years later. So you have to factor this thing in as what is the minimum amount you can do every day. And that it is the fourth dimension. 
it is the third dimension would say, can you do all of that today? I don't know if you could do that with 10 people working a 12 hour shift. But if you use the fourth dimension, you can do that. I mean, think of, I mean, think of a flip book and you just took a pin prick and you put a pin as close as you could to like the center of the book, like the ridge. And every day you just did a pin prick to where if you lined them up, two pin pricks were touching. I mean, truly like the size of a pinhead. It wouldn't even be paper because paper kind of breaks bigger. It'd have to be like plastic or whatever. Just bear with me. And if you just do them to where they're touching every day and then just do that, do that at the beginning of class or something, whatever. Next thing you know, it's winter break and you flip through it and and you're holy shit it covers the whole thing it goes from left to right it's insane it's because you're utilizing a, another dimension to do the same amount of work right it's let's look at it from if you have a you ever look at like a soda bottle or something and it says like what however much is in it 16 ounces 20 ounces, and you're like that's not fucking 20 ounces like look how thin that bottle is or you know like a, a gas station that everyone's got their weird artsy artisan water fiji or whatever and it's like a tall thin bottle and you're like that's not 30 ounces like but then you pour it out into a whatever it's just like a normal milk jug or something or whatever it is and it's the exact same and you're like motherfucker you know, well, it's because we're looking at three dimensions and although it's thinner, it's taller, right? Or the same thing where it's, you know, again, that's what she said, but like a short and fat glass, you're like, that's, that will fit into there and you fill it up and you, it overflows and you're like, what the fuck? And it's, it's kind of that despite, you know, so that's just a change in a dimension, but it still allows for the same thing to happen. It just looks different. Well, once you can grasp that that is a reality, you just have to add another dimension to it. And it's time. Granted, we can't step back and see time unless, of course, there's something we do a little bit each day and can look back on, and then we can visualize time. Dragging that piece of wood every day, just get lost. You have to just let it get lost in the sands of time. This None of this stuff applies if you're trying to get something done immediately. If you've been failing a co course and you got to cram, you got to cram. This doesn't apply. But when you set out to do something and you really want it, you just have to accept that you're not going to have it immediately and you're probably not going to have it this year. Let go through the waves of denial. No, I want it this year. I'm going to have it this year. Let all of it go through you. Just some like like some X lax. Just let it go through you. And then come to peace with the fact that you're just gonna do a little bit each day. Do a little bit each little bit each day to the point where it's not even the main focus of your mind anymore of saving the money, of dragging the wood into the wood pile or whatever. That's actually the goal is to get it to where that's not even really what you give a fuck anymore about. But the key is, is we're at this intersection. The key is, is get it to where you don't really give a fuck to where it doesn't even occupy your mind anymore. And therefore, you know, it's like waiting for Christmas during April or whatever. The days fly by. But when you're 10 and it's December 20th, I mean, my God, you've lived seven lifetimes before dinner the next day. But you're waiting for Christmas, obviously. For all you retards that didn't get that analogy. Yeah. You have to get disinterested in your goal. Alleviate your mind, right? You're getting over the X or, you know, your team disappointed you in the Super Bowl. You just, fuck it, I'm just not even going to pay attention. Just fucking let, let it go. I'm get on to something else. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But you cannot get so disinterested that you stop doing it altogether. That's when you'll stop doing this psychopathic, let's go work at three hours a day. You have to bring it just... It's like edging, right? It's like tantric sex. Bring it right to the edge of just completely giving up. But don't let it go over to the threshold of not doing anything anymore. You gotta bring it right to the edge where it's something that you don't even give a shit about anymore.
it's something but that you still do and it's simple enough that you don't mind doing it because it's not this i don't even give a fuck about that why am i going to put two hours of my day into it no get it to where you don't give a fuck about what the thing is and you also don't give a fuck about your obligation I don't give a fuck, but it's only 15 minutes a day. Whatever, I'm trying this new long-term thing I heard on Tommy's podcast. No, he's just, no, he's he's, he's this re- retarded guy. I'm just fucking doing this thing, yeah. Do that, and then the time goes by, and all of a sudden you're going to look back at it one day and go, oh my God, I have the thing. That is how you need to go about these long-term goals. I will wrap that around to the podcast, December 12th, 2020 or 2019. I had wanted to start a podcast for like five years, just, uh, I'm not going to do it. It's blah, 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 blah. And I finally decided let's just start because I started kind of relearning these old things I had learned in middle school, high school, and college. Went on my kind of several years of downward spiral after my brother and just my own implosion, kind of rebuilding myself, start to learn the lesson again with graphic design. And was like, let's apply that to the podcast. So I started very simply. I told myself that I was just going to do one episode a week. And I don't know how it's going to, I don't know anything about audio. I don't know anything about video. I don't know, about, don't worry about any of that. So I had on my buddy Duran, Doran, Doran Durant, episode one. And it was at this table or this desk. This desk was turned around, didn't, didn't have a backdrop. And I was sitting on this old fucking rocking chair that I have from like my, my mom has from like her grandma. This thing's this thing is fucking, it's probably older than Woodrow Wilson. It's insane. Sat on that and he and I did an episode. It was the topic of the day was riots in Hong Kong. The audio was shit. It was uploaded in like 540p. It, it was, the whole thing was just shit. Duran, I forever love you for that, though. You gave me episode one. The next week, I did episode two. The next, and then episode three. Shit quality, but I just started. Okay. At that same time, I'd been about a year into a subreddit that I had made called Funner History, F-U-N-N-E-R. I have since been permabanned from Reddit and banned from my own subreddit, so there's some poetic injustice. But I had been tracking, I had been tracking metrics on it on my own Excel spreadsheet, just for my own kind of little thing to do, kind of relearning this long-term goal methodology. So every day I'd write down like the total number of subscribers on an Excel spreadsheet, whatever. And I was also doing it with um, Fine Art America, which is where I put a bunch of my shitty uploads to where it's not on like dope sweatshirts like this. It's just like shitty knickknacks and coffee cups. And it's probably all run from China. I don't care. The point is, is when I logged in, I could look at unique visitors or not even unique visitors, just total visitors. And I started kind of having fun with it to where it reminded me of genetics or biochemistry where you would kind of do like a thing of like the departed where you flush a piece of information down and see who's the rat. Where does it come out? Um, with genetics, there was this thing that they would, they would always do. We didn't do it, but I mean, you'd learn about it to where they would take this fluorescent protein gene and they would um, and they would sort of insert it. I forget what the term is. It's translocation or lo- whatever. But you'd put it into this like, area of the genome, and then you'd kind of flush it out. Granted, we're playing God, and we have these Drosophila melanogaster flies reproduce. Shout out to my biology gang. Everybody that took biology knows about Drosophila mel- melanogaster gang. But you could sort of flush out where what what does this gene do? So you'd play God and you have these offspring and I don't know, maybe they're like their left most whatever antenna would be like glowing green at night. And you'd be like, oh, that part encodes at least part of it, the surface of the leftmost antenna. 
cool. The next time you maybe do this another animal and you're like, oh, now this pig has green molars. That's the molar gene. And you kind of just, you can sort of just flush it out and figure out where shit goes, right? It's like that book Moby Duck where all those ducks fell off a shipping container in the early 90s. And despite them falling within one like thousand or maybe like a maybe like a 10 square mile patch over the years they found up on every continent meaning that even in the differentiation of just that one patch there were different ocean currents and they ended up learning more than like billion dollar noaa studies could do point is is you can flush these things out you can flesh them out by flushing them out okay so what i would start to do was I would start to flush links to Fine Art America because whereas with my subreddit, I could only ever see total subscribers. Reddit eventually took away, like you could see views on individual posts. Reddit's a communist shithole. And I didn't quite understand what I was doing with the podcast yet. It was just kind of a thing I was doing. With this, I could see the unique visitors or total visitors. And so... What I would do is I had like 30 different accounts. That's why they ended up all getting perma banned. I got IP banned. Fuck Reddit. But I would just try and I I mean I made some sales, but even then I had like the profit margin set at a penny. That's not what the purpose was. The purpose was I just wanted to track visitors. And so I would find things like um maybe like on a trending uh, uh post on the front page about whatever, just we'll say South Park. I would find like the highest, most comment with the least number of replies. Anywhere where I could get like, the, I could get the Venn diagram of, of um, um, what, what, what am I looking for? Um, fuck. I guess where I could get eyes on it, visibility. Did that camera just, did it, why did it just get fuzzy? Fuck. Oh, come on, you stupid piece of shit. Come on. Why you gotta be like this, camera? Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Why? Focused again? No. Fucking god damn it. God damn it. Um, fuck. No, don't fuck up on me. Just start recording. Whatever, whatever, it's still going. I'm not going to fucking play with it, whatever. Whatever. Um, visibility. We look for the most visibility. You can't just comment on the top comment because what if there's already a thousand comments? So you got to find like the uppermost kind of one that doesn't have a lot of comments. And then I would slip a reply in there. LOL, that reminds me of this shirt. Whatever. And I would try to track it. And I would do it on Instagram. I would do it on Reddit. I would do it on YouTube, wherever, any platform that I could. And I would just try to track it. I would flush out these links. And I could go into Fine Art America. And I could just look at, by the way, it's not fine art. It's shitty art. But I would just go in and I would I would look at where do these things flush out from. And, you know, sometimes you'd get a couple, sometimes you'd see a quick spike because you can look at individual views. So if I upload, for instance, this design on a coffee cup, cup I can go in and I can see the number of views and I can see even where they're from. A lot from Kiev, which is odd. But you can track them, San Francisco, the fucking Philippines, fucking wherever, Montreal. And it, I just thought that was interesting. Now, granted, my dumbass was like, maybe if I mark the profit up to 3,000%, I'll be a millionaire. Didn't work. But you could see clicks. And I was like, that's interesting. So I was doing that. And I was like, man, I, like, I don't, like, this is interesting. I can't get people to buy shit, but I was like, I'm, I'm kind of learning this odd, like, um, it'd be like if I'm not a butcher, but I know how to corral cattle. That's a sociopathic analogy, but like, I was like, that's interesting. 
I can't get them to buy anything, but I can push them in this. And that's the thing is no one likes to know that they're being pushed. So it's this odd, you kind of got to, it's the illusion of choice. And it's like, yeah, oh, follow this link, which also made me really skeptical of everything I ever looked at online now. Cause now I'm like, who's pulling the strings? The point is, I was like, that's cool. And then when I realized that you can go into YouTube studio and look at metrics of who watches it, where, you know, what's the average view time? What are the outside sort? Did they get recommended the video on YouTube or did they find it on Instagram or on parlor or whatever? I was like, Oh, that's interesting. And I started to kind of do the same thing with YouTube where I would just post and they were, they were so terrible. Cause I'd be like, that reminds me of, the timestamp at one hour, 47 minutes and 11 seconds of this new podcast. And there's like six subscribers. People be like, what the fuck is this? But I could still track who clicked on it. And to the, it was all just this game to me. And I realized as I was doing this, I was like, why am I putting effort into building funner history? Which isn't last time I checked was over 20,000 subscribers, but I got permaban from Reddit. They run advertisements on that subreddit. You scroll on, you scroll through every, like every fifth post. It'll be like, do you need a new home loan? Or it'll be like DeVry universe. They make tons of money from clicks and I don't get a fucking penny of it. Those dirty communist shitholes. And it is communist shithole, excuse me, but it is a communist shithole because they received $300 million from Tencent, the corporation, T-E-N-C-E-N-T, -E -E which is predominantly owned by the CCP, majority shareholder. Every corporation within the, CC, within the CCP's borders has to have at least one member of the CCP on the board of directors. This is just so happens to be a predominantly owned Chinese company, which means it is literally a front for the CCP. Reddit is owned by the CCP. Go fuck yourself. Fuck that commie shithole. Anyway. I was like, that's interesting. So I would start kind of tracking different episodes. How can I slide these in there? And that got me interested and i was like oh well then i started to notice that like one of the other things i was tracking was like karma again it was sort of not that i gave a fuck about karma no one gives a fuck about reddit karma if you do give a fuck about reddit karma go eat a tide pod but i started tracking it as sort of oh there's this just make a shitty post every day and you can kind of watch it go up it was just a metric that i was watching rise and i remember thinking this was like October 2019. I remember thinking, I was like, I wish karma was actually worth something because I can I can get it to rise. That's what she said. And then I so I'd start to get into these little self challenges where I'd make a brand new account and I would join different. I would make an account for liberal subreddits. I'd make an account for conservative ones. I'd make an account for whatever, and I would just see how quickly I could get it to ten thousand karma, and then I would just stop using it. I just didn't care. But like. I would do that and I would text my friend Miguel and I'd just be like, eh, look, did it, did it, did it. You know, he'd be like, you're a savant. And I'd be like, I know I'm retarded. But I did, and I did this with 30 plus accounts where I just, I kind of got, I had fun at how quickly could I get this shit to rise. That's what she said. And, and I remember thinking, I wish this was actually worth something because I'm, this thing's just kind of going. And then not only that, I found that once you got to a certain size, again, that's what she said. Once you get to a certain size, you didn't even have to post anymore. And it just kind of gradually rose. And I was like, wow, if there's not a lesson about savings. So I kind of like relearned all of these things I had learned earlier in my life. And it's like, you know, like a car crash victim learning to like walk and talk and like move their extremities again. All, all kidding aside, I kind of felt, I mean, I went from doing a, a ton of drugs, getting addicted to several things, overweight, becoming suicidal to slowly, you know, moving home and really, I mean, building my life back together. And that was, that all led up to December, 2019, started the podcast, was doing one a week. So now we can go back to that earlier lesson I talked about to where let's keep it to manageable. It's, you know what you can do. You can do one a week, right? And I did one a week for like the first six weeks. Meanwhile, I'm also tracking these metrics, right? While doing that, oh, I kind of got to pee again. Sorry, everybody.
So it slowly turned into this. It was all coming together. I didn't even realize it was coming together. To where I was like, man, I've learned how to sort of flesh out links, sort of corral people. And I'm also relearning this long-term goal-oriented thing where I can just do a little bit each day. Next thing you know, I'd, I would log back into these Reddit accounts that I made a year later and they'd be at 150,000 karma and I'd be like, I haven't even posted anything in nine months. But so all these things started to come together and I was like, wait, what if I applied these to the podcast? I know I can do an episode a week and I can have fun. So one, I know I can do an episode a week. So we're getting that lesson of a little bit of work built up over time. Two, I can have fun with this whole flesh out links. Okay, that's cool. Three, there's a cumulative thing. That should be a that that should be a bigger point. There's the the Reddit karma thing tracking. That's even video games where I've I've beat the game on every difficulty, unlocked every skin and every scope and every bonus and perk and maxed out every whatever. I still like games that just keep track of your total whatever because I love seeing how it builds up over time when you're not even trying. So for like just cause, you have to unlock chaos. You're in this like enemy nation and you're just blowing up little shit. It's not that you have to take out tanks to get chaos, although you can. You can do little things just like blow up a gas tank at a gas station. You can blow up a bridge. You just cause chaos in the country. And you need, you know, however many thousands of points to, un you know, you blow up a, you know, a truck or something, maybe you get 75 chaos points. And you need however many thousands to unlock a new area. Well, I beat the game several years ago, but I now just run around and play on it because it's fun. It's a fun open world game, Just Cause 3. And every once in a while, I just kind of log in and be like, huh, oh, look, okay. because there's nothing you can spend it on anymore, but the chaos counter still goes up. But it's one of my favorite things because now I log back in and it's at like two and a half million chaos points. And to me, there there is importance in that because I'm not I'm not playing to get the chaos points up. When you're doing that, it drags by. But when you're just playing for fun and it saves every chaos point, you go, oh shit, it's it just it builds up over time. There are lessons to be learned in video games. There are. Ace Combat, I forget what they're called, is MRP, MSP, but it's the points you get from doing shit, killing enemies, doing achievements, doing it in a certain amount of time, no damage, using guns only, blah, 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 blah. You can unlock, you're right, you start with like a shitty jet and then you can unlock all the way up to like the F-22, the F-35, the SU-57. Then you can get into these weird like experimental planes that don't exist in reality. The XO-2S, the ADX-11F, the fucking all these, the, the Nostarafu, Nost whatever the fuck it is, the Shinden, all these cool like hypothetical planes, the Raven, the, um, yeah, they have weird names and shit. But when you're playing the game, it drags by because not only do you want to unlock the new plane within the plane, you want to unlock the guided the GPS bombs. You want to unlock the the armor piercing rounds for the A10. You want to unlock uh, the you know a quicker seeker head on your air to air missile. On your you want to unlock the hyper velocity air to air missiles. You want to unlock the cruise missiles. The blah 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 blah. The software updates, the your ability to do like a low or high G stall or whatever. And it crawls by. And you find levels where you can kind of quote farm it. You find levels that you can just replay again and again, get a ton of points. But eventually you buy everything, you buy every skin, you get every award, you you beat you beat it on easy, medium, difficult, and ace. You get all the the you kill all the aces. You get all the the novelty skins. You do whatever. You get the achievements and the badges and the emblems and the nicknames. 
But when you're finished doing all of that, and you still just go back through and play it for shits and giggles, you still get the points. So now, it's, you know, it, maybe it takes 100,000 points to unlock a new plane, and it takes forever. But now, I look at it, and I'm at, I'm at like 11 million points, an insane number. And I don't even play it every day. But that's just over like the last two years of just it just building up. Even more, maybe even three years. But the point is, is there's a lesson in that. And this stuff just builds cumulatively. Like Grand Theft Auto, like I always wished it kept count of like the total number of enemies you killed, but it doesn't. Um, yeah, but I, I do like... You know, even Sniper Elite, once you get to level 50, which is a four-star general, unlike Call of Duty where that ends, it's this one you can actually go up to level like 270, and each level up takes 10 times the amount of points of the previous. So no one has like ever done it because it just it would take a lifetime. That's my favorite thing, though, is something that you can just dump a lifetime of work into because I love watching the slow rise. That's what she said. And... So taking all of these kind of lessons, I realized, so I can, you know, so the growing work ethic, right? The video a week podcast, I can flush links out. There's this sort of cyber battleground where I can play, you know, it's like a Chuck E. Cheese game, you know, sink it in the top and you get all the tickets. You know, you try to find a rising post on Reddit or a trending video on YouTube or or whatever, and you try to slide in there in a comment and see oh look so I mean, maybe i averaged 10 views an episode and all of a sudden you get this one and you get 150 in an hour and it's like yeah i did the thing there's no purpose to it but whatever i know i need to lose weight when i get out of breath doing a podcast or i'm having a heart attack but my mom's a nurse so hopefully we're good episode a week flush out links the cumulative views the views don't go away you can lose subscribers the views don't go away actually sometimes youtube does that because they're dirty commies but and i remember the first i remember when i got to episode 10 i like couldn't believe it i was like fuck i'm already at episode 10 and i was like i could not have done that in a day not only have i done more than i could ever do in a day it also took less subjective work think back to the chalk drawing the line versus going down the hill on the skateboard. And it was sort of reawakening. I was relearning this thing that I had learned over the years. And I was like, oh, oh, this, this can be fun. And then, classically, I made the same mistake I had been making over the previous years since I'd lost my brother. I was like, let's go all out. And I basically did this like sprint from like episode 10 to episode 40 in like two weeks. And I burned the fuck out. I wanted to quit the podcast. I was like, this isn't fun anymore. God, this pisses me off. That's never straight. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. This sucks. And that was the mistake of like, you know, push, you know, burn the wick at both ends. So I stopped doing that and I took like a week off and back to the working out analogy, you, you do two hours a day and then you don't do it anymore. I was like, once I started again, I was like, what's the point? I'm not doing three episodes a day. I was like, well, let's do five a week. I was like, okay, I can do that. Okay, I could do that. You know, being a little bitch. And that was like, maybe every day you don't have to go try to link the podcast in some rising thread in the cyber world. How about just track the views, period? And every once in a while, if you have fun or you see one that comes up naturally, it comes across your screen on whatever app you're on, and you see, hey, here's a rising thread about X topic, and I've done an episode on that topic. Well, sure, have a little fun. Try to insert it, and then you can see it spike, and it's fun. It's fun, but keep it fun. So all these things kind of came together into like the ultimate, most beautiful, well-rounded test was, is the podcast. And so whereas I, you know, I 
sort of stumbled across episode 10. Wow, I'm already here. And then I burned it at both ends. And I was trying so hard to get to 40 episodes for whatever fucking reason. I decided that was the number I needed to get to. I was so exhausted, but it was like playing the video. It's like playing Ace Combat and unlocking the next plane. I got there and I was like, Jesus, I can't do the next thing. Like, fuck. So five a week. Track the views. Link it when you want. Put it into the background. And almost don't pay attention. Don't let it go to nothingness. But just do a couple a week. I was in online graphic design school at the time. Like this, it wasn't my main priority. And I just did that. And so whereas I put my heart and soul to get to episode 40, next thing I knew, I was like, hey, episode 100. And I wasn't even trying. And I was like, oh, I blink and there's a hundred episodes each like an hour. The early episodes are all like two or three hours long. I was like, I was like, holy shit. And I had this Excel spreadsheet from day one where I tracked subscribers, number of uploads, number of views, total watch minutes and uh, impressions. Now it's at, this is episode 330. Wow. Total views is, I think now it's at like 179,000. Wow. Total view time is like 1.3 million. Impressions is like three quarters of a million. Subscribers, 1,839. And so it's this, this slow, but, but unstoppable stacking of just kind of chaos points just do another i was just at episode 100 with garrett bruhawk i was just at episode 200 with marcus cardona i just did episode 300 solo rant now we're at 330 and just like sitting at that dinner table and i blinked and it was behind me I'm on episode 330 with 1,839 subscribers on Thursday, January 28th, 2021 at 4.35 p.m. Eastern time. What what am I going to look back at now? It's going to be July. It's going to be Christmas. It's going to be the five-year anniversary. It's going to be episode 2,000. Episode 10,000. And so the time is passing regardless. You may be thinking back to the chalk analogy. Yeah, it's easier to hold down the piece of chalk, but I mean, you also got to go to the top of the hill. You got to get on a skateboard and drive down. Well, here's the thing, and here's how we'll close this, is you don't have to go to the top of the hill and get on the skateboard because that is the nature of time. You can't stop the thing. You can die. You can kill yourself. Please do not comment if you're thinking about that. I will help you. Time is going by no matter what. You cannot stop it. So you are going down the hill. You are on the skateboard. Choose the thing that you want. You want to learn to play the guitar. You want to become a writer. Choose these bullshit baby goals. I'm going to write one page a day of just gibberish, even if I'm just writing down my errands. Just start. Just fucking start. Do one push-up a day. And not even two tomorrow, three the next day. Just do one a day total. Who fucking cares? In a year, you'll be at 365. Just just start. You're on the skateboard. You're hurtling downhill. It does not stop. It cannot stop. Put your arm out. Put down the piece of chalk. You, the time is going to pass anyway. You might as well have that long straight line of chalk, whatever that is. And then next thing you know, you'll be here, but now you'll have this huge thing behind you. So I did episode one. Blink. I'm finishing episode 330. It, it, that's, what, that's what it does. So... Just do that. Just choose your goal, whatever it is. Break it down into the simplest baby step you can. 
you have to fight the desire to burn it at both ends fuck that i'm going to start i'm going to run three miles a day and do a 10-hour workout fight that urge or give into it but when you do go back and you're tired remember that you only have to do 15 minutes don't beat yourself up if you don't do 10 hours make your goal putting a just start start very simple january 28th make something that finishes on january 28th next year every day put at least one penny in a fucking cup or something some days you can put in a quarter that's fine but if you put a quarter in that doesn't mean that you can take 25 days off now you still have to put one penny in a day one day maybe you put in a golden dollar who knows that's fine you can go over but every day put in at least a penny just do that just fucking put it next to your the keys where you fucking go by every day put it in your car whatever it's something that you don't give a shit about to the point where you can forget it and not become obsessed with it and it's also such a tiny amount of work that you can stick with it and in a year look at that jar and go jesus christ look at all this change let that be your your starter set or like a drug dealer the first right the first dose is for you to get you addicted let that be your starter next year try something else do that i started with tracking reddit karma and now it's turned into a podcast where i've had on a guy that walked on the fucking moon i mean really appreciate that that's insane sure i'm patting my own back but at the same time i mean like that's fucking nuts so choose a goal that you want to do how real quick finish this up how do you choose the bite-sized goal write down do not do a to-do list in the morning when you're waking up and you're having your coffee and you're on the treadmill whatever and you're feeling like anything's possible because that motherfucker is delusional not everything is possible life is a dirty hellscape of depression and anxiety and regret and fear okay what you do is make your goal at the end of the day preferably while you're in bed if not in bed do it at your most stressed at like 5 p.m the sun's low you're tired you have full belly syndrome Fuck, i hate myself i haven't you know whatever i should be a better person i need to lose weight i need a vacuum whatever in the pit of your daily existential crisis make your to-do list then because the next morning you're gonna wake up feeling better than you are then so you'll be able to accomplish it on your worst day on your worst day the whole day feels like a 5 p.m on a monday right well if you can condition yourself to where you only have to do what you're capable of doing at 5 p.m on a monday then you'll always do it so make your to-do list at the end of the day you know i don't i don't wake up and go i'm gonna do 10 episodes today i'm gonna email a thousand people i wait until i'm fucking exhausted and stressed like after the podcast is normally when i make my to-do list because my brain's fried i'm uh, kind of confused i'm like what am i doing i'll make my to-do list and i'll be like because that's when i'm realistic i'll be like um how about you upload another shirt to the apparel store which is up by the way how about you upload one more shirt to the apparel store um and how about you maybe email this author that's only two things yeah let's just do that tomorrow i'll wake up and i'll be like that's easy i can do a million of these whatever all right it's about waking up on your worst day you go what do i have to do today (coughs) oh i just have to upload one shirt and just shoot one email to an author and then you can go back to bed okay i can do that that's the mindset you have to have so do that hope you guys enjoyed this podcast um choose a goal it's fun you can turn life into a video game 
That's what this isn't some Tony Robbins. You're gonna be the best. You gotta if you want the gold, you've gotta burn the you've gotta burn the boats. If you wanna take the island, be all you can be. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying life is a fucking pit of despair. Choose a goal at the end of the day. Choose a long term goal. Choose your baby step the night before when you're in your worst, most fatigued mood. Do that every day. And after a year, you'll have the thing. And then you start going, well, what else I, What else can I do? And it breathes life into life. It stops becoming this daily fucking treadmill, not treadmill, mouse running, the mouse on the wheel thing, hamster wheel. And it breathes life into life. And so, yeah, you're going to doing this shitty job or whatever, but at the same time, like you're playing your own video game. And that's the best part is you can tailor the video game to you and you alone. I'm playing Tommy 2020. I'm playing Tommy 2K21. And I fucking love it. It's difficult, but I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this bitch because next year Tommy 2K22 is coming out. That game. It's gonna be hard, but I can't wait to beat that one too. Create your own video game. Create Bob 2K21. Play it on easy for 21. Let's play it on easy this year. Next year. Sat on another console, better graphics, more players. There's more DLC. Play that game. Get better at it. If anything, it just turns life fun. It makes life fun. Like let's not, let's not deny it. Like life is miserable. Life is suffering. Like that is existence. So have some fun. That's what I do. And now this thing's happening. I have no idea what's happening. But um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, much love. Stay safe. Shout out Kirill, AJ, and Garrett, my Patreons. Ah, we're at 26 bucks a month now. Merch, The merch link will be in the description. Stick it in the top comment. Go grab some shit. Support the podcast. Help me get a dope computer. Or don't. That's fine, too. Just enjoy the podcast. All right, guys. Stay safe.